distinguished guests present here assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh peace and blessings of allah be upon you all our local administration has requested me to give our distinguished guests a brief introduction to the teachings of islam in particular with reference to an important subject towards which the attention of the world is focused and as a result of which the non muslim world believes that islam is a religion of extremism and terror indeed some people declare that through terrorism islam is destroying the peace of the world it is most unfortunate that there is a group that has a poor understanding of the teachings of islam but is fanning the flames of this erroneous concept indeed some educated non muslims have connected the concept of life after death and heaven and hell to these muslim extremists terrorists and suicide bombers so the result is that the fatalist desire to enter paradise has awakened a peculiar concept of jihad and of dying in the name of allah which has caused them to take up the sword and seize mayhem uh, and cause mayhem these groups today are in reality a by product of this teaching and concept in any case while i admit that the acts committed by a certain ignorant and over enthusiastic muslims have no doubt given a totally wrong impression of the teaching of islam i must also point out that the literature that has been written against islam without a proper understanding of islamic teachings has presented the name erroneous uh, the, the same erroneous a uh, concept about islamic jihad not only that but also this literature that is in uh, great circulation denies the very existence of god and considers religion and god to be responsible for this disorder and chaos be that is it may it is a topic to which justice cannot be done in such a short time however i will try to present the true teachings of islam as they have been expounded by the founder of 
Ahmadiyya Muslim community. First Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, the, whom we consider as the promised Messiah, Islam. Peace be upon him. According to his understanding of the Holy Quran, the traditions of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and the history of Islam, First of all, I will explain the true concept of jihad in the words of the Messiah of the time. It has been 100 years since the founder of the Ahmadiyya community passed away. Therefore, no one can say that the Ahmadiyya Muslim community having made up a fanciful reply in response to the wrong impression created in the world today is now presenting something new. On the contrary, there are the very same teachings that are set out in the Holy Quran. The problem saya Al-Islam says, the prevailing practice found amongst Muslims of attacking people of other religions and which they call jihad is not a lawful war, for it is clearly against the commandment of God and the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, and constitutes a grave sin. What do the words lawful jihad used by the founder of Ahmadiyya community mean? In order to understand this, we have to very briefly glance at the conditions existing in that part of Arabia where the founder of Islam, the Holy Prophet, Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, had proclaimed his divine mission and invited people to Islam. <clears throat> Remember, those people were illiterate and uncivilized. <clears throat> Animosities were born out of ridiculous and petty matters over which they would continue to kill each other for years. The sacred house, the Kaaba in Mecca, that Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, had built in the name and for the worship of the one true God, contained by that time no less than 360 idols for worship. The Meccans were certainly not ready to accept any God in the place of those idols. When the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, made his claim and invited the Arabs towards the one and only God, the intelligent amongst them, some of whom were his relatives, poor people and slaves, embraced Islam. When this movement grew, the disbelievers of Mecca increased their persecution. Cruelty reached such heights that the believers were made to lie on the burning sands of Arabia, while baking hot stones were placed on their chests. They were whipped. Their limbs were tied to camels, and the camels were then driven in opposite direc uh, directions rending their bodies apart. The Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, and his group of believers were banished to a valley, and an embargo was placed on them. Neither food nor water was allowed to be delivered to them. His companions used to say that they would die in any case. So why not go go down fighting. 
After all, these Muslims too came from among those who were ready to kill and cause bloodshed over the most trivial of matters. But when anyone said, permit us to fight, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, would say that he had not been commanded to fight, but to be patient. This patience was not due to any weakness. Indeed, history later proved that a few hundred believers managed to defeat a force of thousands. This patience was shown only because the Holy Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, had not been commanded by Allah the Almighty to fight. At last, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, allowed some oppressed ones to migrate. And then, after some time, he too migrated to, uh, to Medina. By that time, there were some inhabitants of that town who had become Muslims. On, this, on his arrival, a large number of people embraced Islam in Medina. The Holy Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, entered into covenants with other tribes and faiths, and amongst them there were also Jews. He established a state in which all subjects were granted freedom. If anyone was punished for some crime, that punishment was given according to his or her own religious jurisprudence. Nevertheless, as subjects of the state, all of them held equal rights. Despite all this, the allegation leveled against the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is, is that, God forbid, he spread terror. The question is that when it is known that the Muslims were in such a condition of helplessness and were being so cruelly oppressed, why is such an allegation being made against the Prophet and the Muslims? I have briefly mentioned the conditions which prevailed at that time. Even in such conditions, when the Muslims granted to, uh, migrated to Medina and began to live in uh, relative peace, here also the Meccans hounded, pursued, and attacked them. The first battle is known as the Battle of Badr. At, the at that time, Muslims were in such a um, condition that they had neither resources nor equipment for battle. Whereas confronting them was a fully equipped army. These circumstances are not hidden from anyone and are recorded in history. What could those unskilled and inexperienced people have done? Some of them were only teenagers. However, when the enemy, uh, the enemy wanted to annihilate the Muslims, Allah the Almighty instructed them to fight back. So the following verse of the Holy Quran was revealed. And according to historians, it is the first commandment that deals with fighting. But I invite you to look at its beauty and the purpose for 